Good morning, everyone. I am your Monday host, Katherine Farrell, and we're coming to you live from the Durfner Judaica Museum here at the Hebrew Home. And of course, this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. So today is Monday, January 25th, and the time is 1030. We have a great show planned for you today, so let's jump right into it with the weather. The weather for today is partly cloudy, uh, partly cloudy skies this morning will become overcast during this afternoon, the high of 38 degrees, winds north-northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Uh, I think there's some uh, inclement weather coming to us this week, so uh, let's stay tuned and moving on to this day in history. So I only picked one because it was pretty cool. Uh, on January 25th in 1905, at the premier mine in Pretoria, South Africa, a 3,106 carat diamond is discovered during a routine inspection by the mine's superintendent. Weighing 1.33 pounds, can you imagine that? A diamond weighing 1.33 pounds <laughs> and christened the Cullinan, it was the largest diamond ever found. Frederick Wells was 18 feet below the Earth's surface, which is crazy to me on its own, when he spotted a flash of starlight embedded in the wall just above him. His discovery was presented that same afternoon to Sir Thomas Cullinan, who owned the mine. Cullinan then sold the diamonds to the Transvaal Provincial Government, which presented the stone to Britain's King Edward VII as a birthday gift. Worried that the diamond might be stolen in transit from Africa to London, Edward arranged to send a phony diamond aboard a steamer ship loaded with detectives as a diversionary tactic. While the decoy slowly made its way from Africa on the ship, the Cullinan was sent to England in a plain box. Edward entrusted the, the cutting of the Cullinan to Joseph Asher, head of the Asher Diamond Company of Amsterdam, Asher, who had cut the famous Excelsior diamond, a 971 carat diamond found in 1893, studied the stone for six months before attempting the cut. On his first attempt, the steel blade broke with no effect on the diamond, and on the second attempt, the diamond shattered exactly as planned. Asher then fainted from nervous exhaustion. <laughs> The Cullinan was later cut into nine large stones and about 100 smaller ones, valued at millions of dollars all told. The largest stone is called the Star of Africa I, or Cullinan I, and at 530, 530 carats, it is the largest cut, fine quality, colorless diamond in the world. The second largest stone, the Star of Africa II, or Cullinan II, is 317 carats, and both of these stones, as well as the Cullinan III, are on display in the Tower of London with Britain's other crown jewels. The Cullinan I is mounted in the British Sovereign's Royal Scepter, while the Cullinan II sits in the Imperial State Crown. So, pretty cool if you like diamonds. Uh, our national day today, today is National Florida Day, National Irish Coffee Day, National Opposite Day and National Bubble Wrap Day. <laughs> My kids love bubble wrap, so I just did a little digging and found some fun facts about bubble wrap, which you may or may not know. Uh, number one, bubble wrap was originally invented as wallpaper. 50 years ago, Alfred Fielding and Mark uh, Chevin created three-dimensional wallpaper from sealed air pockets between shower curtains. They thought people would love the groovy design, but bubble wrap's destiny was uh, function over form. Can you imagine bubble wrap as wallpaper? A great packaging material was born, obviously. And number two, popping bubble wrap relieves stress. Duh. I mean, that <laughs> can be thought of, I mean, for me and for my kids. So toss out that stress ball and head towards your latest packaging instead. According to research by Sealed Air Corporation, one minute of popping bubble wrap can reduce stress levels as much as 33%, the equivalent of a 30-minute massage. Wow. Uh, number three, bubble wrap was almost an official toy. Bubble wrap made it to the National Toy Hall of Fame finals in 2016. It was up against other serious contenders. While it didn't make it in, we hope it will one day. And last one, number four, bubble wrap goes virtual. Did you know you can pop virtual bubble wrap? 
download the app for your phone or de-stress at your desk. Isn't that crazy? You can, there's an app to pop bubble wrap. And my kids, we don't really get things with bubble wrap anymore. Amazon sends these um, air-filled plastic uh, like cushions. And so my kids, they go crazy over them. They have to really make sure that they have enough of them for each of them. And then they jump on them. So it's, I guess, kind of the same thing, just a little bit um, different these days. I haven't seen bubble wrap in a while. Anyway... On to the resident birthdays. Uh, it's Lauren S. and Beulah B. celebrating birthdays today. Happy birthday. And for our staff, it's Rosina in nursing and Marcello in food services. So happy birthday to everyone celebrating. Our celebrity selling a birthday today is Alicia Keys. Uh, first singer to receive five Grammy Awards at once after releasing her debut album, Songs in A Minor, which included Fallen in 2001. Her hit album Girl, Girl on Fire earned her a 15th career Grammy Award in 2014 when it was named Best R&B Album. And Keys appeared on an episode of The Cosby Show, studied Mozart and Chopin, and graduated from the Professional Performing Arts School as valedictorian. Her album songs in A minor sold uh, over 12 million copies. She's also been a judge on the singing competition show The Voice. Keyes was born to Teria Joseph and Craig Cook and raised alongside her brother Cole. She married rapper Swiss Beats on July 31st, 2010. They had a son named Egypt in October and a son named Genesis in December of 2014. All right, so on to the menus. Checking out what we have for lunch today. Uh, it's a cheeseburger with french fries and tomato basil salad. The dessert is pears and then for dinner we have roasted fennel and carrot soup and fried fish with sauteed vegetables rice and beans and the dessert is vanilla pudding so sounds delicious okay our new segment sports news i guess i've been doing it for a while maybe i should stop calling it new segment but anyway this one comes from usa today and i you know uh, I, I was really excited about this this one because i traveled to St. Louis, Missouri in, I guess it was 2018, the summer of 2018, and I toured the Budweiser Company. So this is all about the Budweiser Company, and I got to meet the Budweiser Clydesdales, or at least one of them, you could take a picture, and I was blown away. I've been around horses, I grew up um, riding horses, and I've worked with horses before, but to actually be next to the Clydesdale, it was literally like twice my height. It was so m magnificent to be next to this animal that was just, it just blew me out of the water. So this is about the Budweiser company. So Budweiser becomes the latest Super Bowl commercial stalwart to sit out this year's broadcast. With funny frogs, adorable puppies, and its iconic Clydesdale horses, Budweiser has become synonymous with Super Bowl advertising over the past four decades, producing some of the most memorable commercials in the history of television's marquee live event. But this year, however, the brand is taking a pass. Budweiser announced Monday morning that it is foregoing its annual Super Bowl commercial slot for the first time in 37 years, joining fellow juggernauts Coke, Hyundai and Pepsi in skipping this year's Super Bowl broadcast amid the financial uncertainty of the COVID-19 pandemic. The beer brand said in a news release that instead of paying to air a Super Bowl ad, it will instead be reallocating the media investment to raise awareness about the COVID-19 vaccine throughout the year in partnership with the Ad Council. Quote, like everyone else, we are eager to get back uh, get people back together, reopen restaurants and bars, and be able to gather to cheers with friends and family, Budweiser Vice President of Marketing Monica Rutsky said in a statement. To do this and to bring consumers back into neighborhood bars and restaurants that were hit exceptionally hard by the pandemic, we're stepping in to support critical awareness of the COVID-19 vaccine. According to the news release, Budweiser plans to donate some of its advertising airtime throughout 2021 to the Ad Council and COVID Collaborative, a coalition of experts in health, education, and the economy. Clarissa Dickinson, a spokesperson for Budweiser, said she was unable to provide an exact financial value of the donated time, 
but called it a multi-million dollar commitment. CBS, which owns the television rights for Super Bowl 55, has sought $5.5 million for a 30-second spot during this year's broadcast, according to multiple reports. Though Budweiser is skipping this year's television broadcast, it will still run a 90-second ad titled Bigger Picture on the digital platforms before and during the Super Bowl. The commercial is narrated by actress Rashida Jones. I love her. Anyway, um, our final segment for today is just going to be a horoscope. So uh, for the Aquarians, born January 20th to February 18th, uh, quote, my business is circumference, wrote pe poet Emily Dickinson in a letter to her mentor. What did she mean by that? Circumference was an important word for her. It appeared in 17 of her poems. Critic Rochelle Cecil writes that for Dickinson, circumference referred to a sense of boundlessness radiating out from a center, a place where one feels completely free, where one can express anything and everything. According to critic Donna M. Campbell, circumference was Dickinson's metaphor for ecstasy. When she said, my business is my circumference, she meant that her calling was to be eternally in quest of awe and sublimity. Aquarius, it's your time to get your mind and heart and soul thor thoroughly expanded and elevated and make good use of Dickinson's circumference in the coming weeks. So guys, that's our show for today. Uh, stay tuned. We have uh, What's the Story with Kate coming up at 1115. This afternoon, we have Exercise with Deborah at 1.30 and Resident Council at 2.30. Don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home uh, tonight on Channel 88 or on YouTube. So join us again tomorrow for another great show, same time, same place. Once again, I'm your Monday host, Catherine Farrell, and this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Bye, guys.